in somewhere and see how people break chairs and wound themselves. But you, before you get to the ground, somebody has come to hold you. It's a skill. Because they are holding people who are bigger than them. There is a skill. We are that meticulous. So don't just say God is prospering koinonia. Guys, we are blessed. We are blessed through skill. hallelujah let's hurry up so we can stop somewhere skill and expertise is the key is the key to promotion and increased salary you see somebody who has been grumbling and hating his boss tell him be skillful be skillful then you can pray stop drumming at the gates of heaven when you are not skillful let me tell you something i humorously tell people if I'm your boss and you are not skillful, I can be a good pastor to you, but I'll fire you. And I'll fire you because I'm a serious Christian. Hallelujah. I will never entertain a worker in church, for instance. I mean, maybe there is, I'm, I'm your boss in an office somewhere, and you think because we are members of Koinonia, you are not serious, you will never get the job. Never get the job. I don't do all those kinds of things. Say, remember, we are from the same place. Whether we are from the same room, if you have not demonstrated the skill, if you are so much of a liability for me, I will bless you with direct money so that you will go, but not to commit things to you. He gave unto some five, some two, and one according to their several ability, not their prayer request, their ability. Their ability. I hammer it on the workers to be skillful. And it's my desire to see everybody who is at the sound of my voice. You must become skillful at something. You must become an expert in something. You can't become jack of all trades and master of none. You have to lay your hands on something. Be a master in it. And I guarantee you, you're on your way to the wealthy place. You see the implication of the formula you were just jumping around on? Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy that demand. Write it down. Demand for your service is not enough. You must have both the psychological and intellectual know-how to satisfy the demand. The person who babs me is here in Koinonia. He is so skillful. I love him so much and he babs me. No matter how you love me, I will not submit my head to you to play around with. I don't have that luxury. I love you. I can, I can, I can help you. I can teach you. But I won't do that. How many people are not skillful in what they do? We are prayerful, but we are not skillful. Say, I receive grace to be skillful. Let me tell you the truth. Skill is an asset. Skill is an asset. If this guy is so broke, if he is so broke today that nothing moves, all he needs to do is go to a hotel in Abuja, just ask for permission to sit somewhere, and then he will begin to play. And someone will see him and say, can you come and play for one program? What's your cost? And he uses other psychological factors and walks his way out of poverty forever because of skill the next level of your life is at the mercy of your skill not at the mercy of god alone at the mercy of your skill man of god your preaching skill will determine the next level of ministry your leadership skill your financial intelligence what you are receiving right now there are people standing outside no seats for them there are people looking through the window. They are passionate to receive that skill. And I guarantee you, in a short time, their lives will show. Meditate on these things, the Bible says. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto God. There is nothing as lovely as an anointed person who is skillful. It's a combination of grace and power. Anointed and skillful. Not only that you are anointed to sing, you know the rudiments of music that will make you exceptional. You are a businessman. You are not just a businessman offering services. You are exceptionally skilled. 
when your contemporaries look at you they name you after your competence you walk in your office and they give you a name that is synonymous to skill even your enemies will recommend you and say please promote this guy we hate him but there is nobody in this company who can do it as he I gave you a story of somebody in this country he works three jobs three jobs and he works only three times in a week he's so skillful he's the brain behind many successful companies in Nigeria I will not mention the names of the companies you'll be surprised they beg him he works only three times three times in a week and the minimum salary he gets for every one of those jobs is 500,000 minimum and he works only three times skill will defy race skill will defy gender skill will defy age if you are skillful the world will honor you that's why wole so inka received the nobel prize nobody said you are from africa that's why zuckerberg at 30 or 31 is still among the world's richest people skill defies age i'm giving you a key if you sit down in mediocrity you will beg for bread i choose to be skillful in every area i choose to be exceptional i avoid premature manifestation while others are running let them run i will stay back and i will sharpen the knife you are a drummer be skillful i've hammered on these guys you don't want to know how skillful these guys are i've seen their diligence our technical people we emphasize skill not just anointing brothers and sisters it takes skill it takes skill it takes skill the difference between cnn or bbc and one christian channel around that looks as if the television is not working well is skill it's not anointing you watch some channels and you are angry you are angry did they have to do it this way they want cheap labor rather than going to call a media consultant and pay him to produce something that is world class and coordinate this they refuse they say there's one brother who offered to help us and they remain in mediocrity to their detriment powerful message from the throne but nobody can listen many people try to write books and they don't consult with people they bring out a book that is the message is deep but the skill the artistry in writing it is not there td jakes wrote one skillful book woman thou art loose and he made four million dollars from one book four million dollars multiply that by 210 and it will give you the naira equivalent one man's skill build him out of poverty one skill you have written 10 books nobody even knows because you wrote every you wrote like you are talking they didn't teach you that there is a skill you stood somewhere and you sang a song and the people in the program vowed that they would never bring you for that meeting again were they blessed yes were they embarrassed yes why you had anointing without skill you had access to cook for a millionaire you would have been his personal chef you blew that moment you were praying in tongues in the kitchen but there was no skill the food burned everything went wrong skill papa adeboye said this himself he said when the redeemed campground started he said that they they paid very little attention to the aesthetics of the place they were more focused on the spiritual impact so people would come ceos managers billionaires will come and sit down and heat will will disturb them and he was making everything uncomfortable and god spoke to him and he said a ceo has ac in his office in his jeep he has ac in his parlor bedroom kitchen everywhere there is ac and then he comes to a very established ministry like that and heat is destroying him and he said they started making plans to add to the aesthetics of the place skill 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 let me talk on the last point and then we'll find somewhere to stop skill is an asset it has rewarded me 
I have seen the fruit of skill in my life. I have seen it exceptionally. As I travel to go for meetings, I not only see the beauty of anointing, I see the excellency of being skillful. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word, skillfully dividing it. When I go for meetings, we go together with the protocol and the worship people, and I watch them as they look at me. When they say, let's now welcome Apostle Joshua Selman, and people are clapping, I'm happy because I have the skill. There's nothing you can do about it. I have it. I paid the price and God gave it. I am grateful, but I'm not apologetic about it. I know the people are going to be wow. Just give me 10 minutes of audience and I will shock you. That's all I need. And when I pick up the mic, I know what to do. With wise counsel, make war. I know that at the end of that meeting, somebody will invite me again. It's not pride. It's the truth. You can be that confident. Skill. Please, when you go back home throughout this week, some of you, as you go home, just sit down and think of your life. Please, don't be in a hurry to sleep. You've been sleeping for years. Wake up this night and think. And say, look at how I've been playing with the opportunities God has been giving. Everything you do, nobody demands what you do again because you are not skillful. They ask you to supply clothes. You supplied nonsense. You packaged it in a rubbish way. You delivered it in, in an unintelligent and unprofessional way. And they vowed not to give you that opportunity again. We're on our way to better days. Now you can sing the song well. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a song. I'm on my way to better days. Hallelujah. Yesterday when I was coming from Abuja, a woman met me. And then when she met me, she wanted me to talk to her on some things. I spoke to her on a few things. And when I was talking to her, this woman was looking at me. And she said, what kind of human being are you? Where are you getting this? And I was on my way going. I said, on my way, I'm on my way rushing. And she said, please, can you give me a minute? And she ran to her room. And this woman brought up an envelope with dollars and said, take. I said, no, 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 what is this place? No, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. And she squeezed it into somebody. And I said, this is somebody's salary for how many months? The gift of a man, the skill of a man. I don't talk too much about my private life, but I just want to challenge you a bit. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with gender. Are you getting what I'm saying? I hardly buy things for myself people bring it in honor skill do you know that your skill can take you out from where you are and bail you yes you may be born in nazareth but don't die in nazareth you may be born in nazareth god is speaking to someone here they think you are a non-entity but may your skill prove them wrong may your exceptional qualities prove them wrong number three the difficulty in replacing you Write this word down. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable. To be valued means to not be easily replaceable write this down when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage whatever you want to call it when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult right when your uniqueness or your strategy or your competitive advantage stands you out such that it becomes very difficult to find a worthy alternative to you you will be very wealthy yeah you will when your uniqueness or your strategy 
or as we call it in the business world your competitive advantage when it is so unique that it stands you out you can get another joshua selman but not easily see that there are many preachers but there is only one joshua selman there are many anointed men but there is one joshua selman no man can clone the grace no man can close the can clone the skill no man can clone the uniqueness so you carve a niche that is free of competition you carve a niche that is free of intimidation you stand in a place where you are secured in your uniqueness because it's not easy to find a replacement if you are easily replaceable it's a sign that you will be broke let me tell you how you know you are not valued your absence is easily forgotten and ignored when your absence is easily forgotten when your absence is unnoticed it's a sign that your impact is small yeah. if i come to work in your company even if it is one day i will do something that will make you chase me like your life depends on it it's called value the amount of money that comes to you is dependent on the difficulty in finding an alternative to you. When there is no alternative to you, they will pay whatever price. You will name your price. You will name your price. Hallelujah. I have taught people these things. It's difficult to get another mic. These guys are all skillful. It's difficult to get another Elijah. It's difficult to get them. No, they are all unique. David Dam is here. Come. All these guys you see, they are skilled people, but they have their uniqueness. There is a way David Dam is so unique, you cannot clone him, no matter what happens. There is a way Sam comes on stage, and you know he's in a class of his own. What do you have in your life that truthfully you can say, when it comes to this, God has put me in a class? Void of competition. Some of you is only trouble that you are in a class of your own. Gossiping, all these bad, bad things that are bad, bad qualities. That's what you are in a class of your own. Tonight, change. Everybody is selling, but there is a way you do yours. The day you don't open your shop, people come and there are five shops open, but they are waiting for you. They say, Abba, can't you buy? Say, uh, there is, I like that smile. There is a unique touch to what you do. There is a way you do what you do. You are the happiest staff in your corporation. The day you don't come, the entire workforce is gloomy. They are, they are sad. They miss you. Some of you, nobody is missing you right now. It's bad. It's bad. It's a serious issue. Think about it. Nobody is missing what you are giving. ATC called me this morning and they said, they wanted to do a novelty football match in honor of my birthday. They said they want to play a football match with Koinonia to honor me on my birthday. I said, wow, that's so touching. Who would do it for you and when? It's a serious question. I'm not intimidating you. Who has chosen to go out of his way to do something for you? You are saying there is no money. There are people they are chasing with money. People bless me every day. I say it with all humility. It's not because I'm Joshua Selman. When you are not easily replaceable, you become an asset even to your enemies because they need you to remain in business. They need your news to remain relevant. Even your enemies desire you to continue. Are you that unique? Or you are just general? I'm a general businessman general talkative what do you sell television what is unique about why should i come and buy tv from you and not from someone else do you have that uniqueness what do you do i flat who have you platted many people what is your uniqueness is it that you plot on time is it that you plot well is it that the lady's hair will not pain her when you plot what is your uniqueness I refuse to be easily replaceable. I refuse it. Pray that prayer in one minute. I refuse it. Please pray. I'm showing you a key. We're not done yet. 
but I just want you to pray it. And then we'll do an evaluation quickly and we're out. Pray! They have belittled you because you are easily replaceable. You have refused to work on yourself. Money is available, I tell you. Money is available. The millions are available. You are not yet unique enough to be rich. You have not qualified for the world. You are grumbling about it. You are complaining. For five years, you are still at that lower level. Somebody came, a fresh graduate. You paid his school fees. He's now your boss. To what degree are you easily replaceable? Pray. Lord, may I be so unique that I become an asset an asset to all and sundry may my absence create a vacuum that cannot be easily filled I'm ready to pay the price to be that unique world class not a local champion you may start small but you hold on to strong convictions convictions that nothing will bend not cultural barriers convictions that nothing will bend not the limitations of your past convictions that nothing will bend pray an award-winning banker exceptional an award-winning ceo an award-winning man of god so anointed so unique you become a standard you become a leader you become a reference it's not a gift it's a reward it's not a gift hallelujah do this and in one day you will get what somebody will get in a lifetime somebody who earns hundred thousand per month how much is that per year how much is that per year 1.2 million how much is that in 20 years 24 million someone can give it to you in one day as a reward to your uniqueness the lifetime one day my father looked at me and said you are an old man you are a young man with gray hair what sort of person are you May people look at you like Jesus and say, what wisdom is this? They look at you and wonder. They don't know what to say about you. Let me tell you something. Stop responding to your critics. The only response you give your critics is greater results. Greater results. Let them keep talking. The gap will be too wide. They will be forced to shut up. Continue moving. Let me tell you. What you are seeing in ministry right now, the level of excellence and the anointing is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will show you what I'm doing today. In my mind, I've left this level. No, I've left this level. I've left this level. Gentiles! This is what will make Gentiles come to your light and kings to their brightness. Millionaires will come and they will queue up. They will queue up. One woman asked me a question. She said, my son, how come people come for counseling? Hundreds of people and they sit down from morning till night just to talk to you for two minutes and five minutes. I didn't know what to tell her. I said, it's the same reason why a baba or a rich man will run backward to see a herbalist. And the herbalist said, turn back and he will turn back. He knows what he's looking for. When you hold the keys to the door, they will look for you. They will beg for you. They will pay you to open the door. Oh, I found my way out of poverty. I found my way out. I found my way out. There is an eternal demand for what I do. I will never run out of relevance. There is an eternal demand. For as long as there is one soul that is not yet saved, there is a demand. For as long as there is one sick body, that is not healed there is a demand for as long as there is one person one family under oppression i will be needed for as long as there are people who need to be taught the principles of the kingdom i will be needed the, the, we are an endangered species a million of me is still not enough to fulfill the demand
you say you are a leader how uncommon are you one time i went to speak in a, a, a small business leadership conference and i sat quietly there were bank managers and people everybody came and was just bragging and talking stories and speaking rubbish i was very disappointed in all humility because i had high expectations for them i didn't know how much i had worked on myself they spoke and everybody spoke nonsense and i came out when i spoke brothers and sisters i tell you the truth and i i lie not i do not know how many complimentary cards and all of that and all of that and they were talking and i looked i said on a good day i will go to their offices and they will drive me out now they are following me with complimentary cards stop following success attract it through your diligence stop chasing money attract it through your skill stop chasing money pay the price and you will drive it away and it will refuse to go It is for this very reason that doctors, lawyers, engineers, soldiers are very rich. This very reason. Those we call professionals. This is why. Because of um, their, the kind of work they do requires a lot of skill. Right? Their professions require a lot of skill that cannot be learned informally and then they require public licensing and authorizations to function so it limits the number of people that can imitate them that's why they are rich if you've ever wondered why doctors are rich engineers architects and all of the people that do what we call professional courses is because there are licenses and to get the licenses and authorizations you need to pass through something and not everybody can do that so they are few and the demand for what they have is so high and they can set any price any price may you be so powerful that you can name your price and people will still pay you and say thank you for helping us the same way you queue in a filling station you are going to use your money to pay for the fuel but you will say thank you because it's so much in demand there is none of you under the sound of my voice who will walk what i'm telling you and will not be rich no not one write a few things down we're rounding up number one you do not seek money directly write this point it's wrong i'm looking for money is an error you will never find it it's not missing you don't look for money directly money like health and happiness is an effect it's a byproduct you don't look for it directly you don't look for happiness directly you look for the things that bring happiness right you don't look for health directly you eat well and it produces health so you don't look for money directly money is an effect responding to a cause money is a byproduct of carrying out a formula stop looking for money you attract it i'm looking for money you will never find it never find You may not like me tonight but you will tell me thank you tomorrow when you become a billionaire and your colleagues look at you and say Abba, didn't we school together you say but we didn't hear the same thing hallelujah you only set it as a goal and then you seek to provide services and solutions to increase your skill and bring it into your life i'm summarizing to you right now two ways you get rich number one you get rich by increasing or improving the service that you offer you need to sit down and birth ideas for bigger services what is a better way to do this you need strategies so i'm still buttressing on the first point you need to increase the services whatever it is that you render I'm telling you the truth. Repent of that cause for that, that thinking and that ideology 
of trying to get something for nothing. Listen, you can come and meet me today. You can tell me your problems. I can talk to you and I can pray with you. There may be financial problems. I will look at you. I may give you minerals or mount or apples or whatever and tell you God bless you. But I will be willing to carry one million and give somebody who can solve my problem. I was always willing to give. You were not willing to receive. Are you getting that? Many people, you come to many people's houses to beg for money. They will not give you money. But they will carry 1.5 on their way to the bank on Monday to go and deposit it. The money is always there. You don't get it by begging. You get it by offering service. If you solve a millionaire's problem, you have access to his millions. Valuable service will give you the keys to the wealth of people. I have met billionaires. I have met millionaires. I'm shocked and surprised to see the way they honor me and respect me and respect Koinonia. There is a woman, she's a billionaire. She jogs with Koinonia messages every day. She's passionate about me. I was with her yesterday and I was amazed. Do you know how valuable you can be? The people you are admiring today will admire you if you do what I'm telling you to do. They will admire you. There are people who I used to call sir before. Today, I've met them. I still recognize them, but they don't recognize me. Many of the people who criticized me in the past have come for counseling today. And they never knew that I was the one they were criticizing. They came and waited for hours. And when they entered, I said, man of God, it's a privilege. I've been hearing about you. And like Joseph, I said, God bless you. How can I help you? And they say everything there. Many of them criticized and said all kinds of things. But their children recommended them to come. And now they keep, they are now seeing the Son of Man in power and glory. Oh, then he was a shepherd boy in Nazareth. Why will you remain this way after this teaching? I will weep. You saw me, I sat down here and I was, I was almost, almost shedding tears, honestly. I'm not an emotional person at all, but there is a very soft side to me. Because when I sat down, I was praying while the worship team was ministering. I said, Lord, will your people respect what I will tell them? Or must they suffer to a point that their lives are almost becoming miserable before they receive it? Many of you are doing well. Parents are helping you. You are not taking care of your finances. And so you may have very little value for what I'm sharing. Until the day you get married and you find out that you are the one who is the breadwinner. That's when you go and check the dictionary and find out the meaning of the word breadwinner. It means the absolute provider. Unassisted, absolute provider. And then you will now review this message again. But the earlier you start, the faster for you. Hallelujah. The earlier you start, the faster for you. And then you increase your skill told you you get rich by increasing your service and then you increase your skill in what you currently do even if it's to get a job there's part three of this and in that one i'll be teaching you multiple streams of income i'll be teaching you certain things the ocean never dries because every stream flows to it I will show you the mystery of Genesis chapter 1. The secret of unlimited abundance. And there was a river that went out of Eden and parted itself into four. I'll be teaching you on multiple streams of income. The key to Oshonic wealth. The very key. Ordinarily, I'm supposed to stop here. But then we'll go the extra mile. Because I hope that this becomes my contribution to your finances. That what our parents did not get, we are getting. So that you are not without any excuse. Then you can see that your status is changing. It no longer will become a cliche. You become magnetic. Absolutely magnetic. It will look like a charm. But money will look for you. Wherever you go. Personal evaluation. Write this. This is an evaluation for you to go and work on. Just three questions I'm about to ask you.
Okay, I'll give you five. Ready? Number one, just write personal evaluations. These are questions that we answer. We're out of time so that we can pray. Sorry, we're taking a bit of time, but I think this is, this is worth it, right? Number one, what are the major solutions or value or service I provide? That's the first question you are going to ask yourself. Write it down. Be absolutely clear about it. What are the major solutions? What is the major value? What are the major services that I provide as a person? As a man of God, I provide spiritual solutions for instance. That's what I do. As a man of God, I, I'm not just a preacher. I provide spiritual solutions. Right? And I know the exact solutions I provide. I'm bringing people to the point of intimacy and passion for God. That's a spiritual solution, right? I'm helping them to comprehend the principles of the kingdom. I'm offering spiritual solutions using the word of God and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's the value that I'm giving to you. So I'm a businessman. This is my product. I'm giving you valuable service. A spiritual solution. I'm connecting you. I'm bringing you to closer intimacy with God. And I'm teaching you the principles of the kingdom that guarantee for a victorious life and a purposeful life. That's value I'm adding to you. And then I'm, I'm solving solutions. I, I mean, I'm providing solutions and solving problems supernaturally. On Friday is going to be miracle service. Another reign of miracles and the anointing of the spirit. That's a spiritual solution. There are people who are coming barren. I spoke to a woman. Eight years barren. Next week she's coming and her, her problem will end. That's a spiritual solution. Somebody is coming who has been buffeted by darkness and light will come. Spiritual solution. This is why I will remain blessed. It's not because I'm preaching the gospel. It's because I'm giving something. Are you seeing that now? This is why preachers are rich. This is why preachers are rich. I refuse to celebrate my birthday. Many people have been asking, why don't you celebrate your birthday? I will celebrate my birthday. Birthday is not the day you were born. It's a celebration of the reason why you were born. I will begin to celebrate my birthday when I feel satisfied that I'm truly impacting lives. It's not just about cutting cake and smiling. It's about many people saying, thank God you were born. Then you can celebrate it indeed. Question two. Is there a demand for the solution I am providing? Question. So question one, what is the value? What are you providing? If you are working in an office, what are you giving? Really? What are they paying you for? You must know it. Don't just say they are paying me 10,000. No. If you know what they are paying you for, you can increase your salary by increasing what they are paying you for. You don't increase your salary by going to your director and say increase my pay no when you increase your skill your service you are paid number two is there a demand for the solutions i'm providing still on number two if yes how great and sustainable is that demand meaning what you are providing whether as an employer as a businessman as an entrepreneur as a leader as a man of god whatever it is is there a demand for what you are providing and if yes how sustainable is that demand will it fade with time there is no amount of civilization that will make what i'm doing go extinct i'm so happy for being a pastor i'm so happy for being a preacher i'm so happy for being a man of god because the more civilization comes the more we are needed you will never kick us out we have come to stay praise the lord Doctors will never go out of extinct because darkness will cover the earth. People will be sick. Women are getting pregnant every day. Women are giving birth every day. Somebody is having a headache. Somebody is breaking the laws of health every day. The disobedience of men will keep medicine alive until Jesus comes. The military will keep reigning. Wicked people will continue. Careless people will continue. And so the military will never go out. Is there a demand for what you have to offer? And if there is, how sustainable is it? 
so that you know whether you should build your life around it or stop wasting your time it is painful to build your life around a service and then it no longer becomes needed and you are left there disappointed number three do i possess all the skill and expertise required in providing the above solutions okay so it is true now that you have identified what you are doing the service the valuable service right and you have seen that there is a demand the third question is do i possess all the skill required in providing the above solutions you can put in bracket am i aware of all the skills required in the first place you are a preacher are you aware of all the skills required in preaching well or you are just carrying the mic and moving around are you aware and if you are aware have you cultivated them as a businessman have you cultivated your communication skills your people skills your leadership skills right have you mastered goal setting have you mastered the principles of execution have you learned how to coordinate people have you learned how to develop a team spirit in people have you learned how to motivate people to achieve a common goal have you learned that do you have financial intelligence what do you understand about accounting and documentation and auditing have you gone that far to know anything about it have you learned how to to motivate people when they do not have courage or are you just a businessman a ceo moving around with complimentary cards packaging with no content as an employee are you so skilled are you so skilled do you know your onions well can you do your stuff so well Number four. Number four. Write two things. Just two. Write two things that you can do daily be, to become exceptional in your field. Two things. Write two things. There are many things you can do. But write two things. What two things can you do daily from this night to start improving yourself in the area where you see God taking you to. If it's as a man of God, what two things will you do every day? As a businessman, what two things will you do every day? As an entrepreneur, as a leader, right? What two things do you think you can do every day to improve on yourself? Five. Write down three major ideas that have come to your mind and you think will be in high demand write three ideas there must have been ideas in your mind especially when you were growing up before you were aware of wickedness before you were aware of the vicissitudes of life that kill the dreams of people write down these three ideas that you have so passionately pursued in your life that you so passionately desire and you know they will be in high demand ministerially entrepreneurial and all of that right it and then pick one of them just one and start working on it ideas are like a vehicle you can only get to one location at a time you can go everywhere with it but not everywhere at a time pick one 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 and start working on Many of us are doing too many things. That's why you don't succeed. Too many things. After the miracle service, I'm going to be teaching us on the principle of execution. It will be the last phase. And then I'll also teach us on multiple streams of income. I'm going to be sharing you a lot of things. We give you all the praise. Everywhere lift your hands. Bless his name inside and outside. Bless you. Mambro shata baka paria da balada bosi pata maria da balada bosi. Lift your hands and bless him. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Ready to be praised, 
Father, sing one more time. Great, great is to be praised. Great is to be praised. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. You are greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. One more time. Prophesy. Sing, I live, yeah. I live, I live, I live, I live, I live, to live, I live, I live, I your I live, I live, I live, I live, I I live, I live to praise your name, and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Sing, I live, I live to praise your name, and I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Just the voices, sing, I live. Praise your name. Let the devil hear you prophesy. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. I live, I live, I live, say. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow, of what tomorrow brings. One more time, just the voices. I live, I live. I live. It's giving us a reason to rejoice. Yeah, I live, I live, I live, say. I have no fear of what tomorrow One more time. I live. Praise your name. You are prophesying that this is why you live. I live, say. spirit is fired up this night hallelujah we're going to make some 
dangerous confessions this night that will, rem it will remind the devil that God and us are still in charge. Hallelujah. While I came up, that was the song that was in my spirit. My, I tell you, my spirit is fired this night. Ah, I live to praise that name. And I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. Are you tired of prophesying? I live, yeah. I live to praise that name. I live I live, I live, I live, I live, I live, For the last time, I live, I live, I live, say. And begin to prophesy. He has made me the head. I remain the head forever. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. He has called me blessed. I remain blessed forever. Go ahead and prophesy. My path is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The hand of the Lord is upon me. His favor encompasses me as a shield. A thousand falls by my side and ten thousand by my right side. None shall harm me with my eyes. Will I watch and see the reward of the wicked? Go ahead and prophesy. My path is as a shining light. Shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that against that day prophesy I'm the head I'm blessed I'm lifted the anointing is upon me in the name of Jesus my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil Gentiles come to my light kings to the brightness of my rising he's exalted me above thrones above dominions above principalities and every name that is named both in this age and in the world to come i refuse sickness i cannot be sick i refuse poverty it is far from me Go, Papre, take a tire. god has not given me the spirit of fear but the spirit of love of power and of a sound mind he has given me the tongue of the learned that i will know how to speak a word in due season my words are seasoned with song to minister grace to the hearers. Come on, prophesy. Through wisdom, my life is built. By understanding, it is established. True knowledge is filled with every blessing. I'm above Satan. I'm above the powers of darkness. He has lifted me. He has given me a name that is above every other name. He calls me great. He calls me blessed. He calls me anointed. My gates are continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. My way pleases the Lord and he makes even my enemies to be at peace with me. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, prophesy koinonia. The Bible says, hold fast. Your profession of faith. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Go ahead and prophesy. It doesn't matter what is happening in your family. God is faithful. God is faithful. I shall not die. I have no covenant with death. I choose life. I choose life. I do not live by the sword. So I cannot die by the sword. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I run into it and I am saved. Go ahead and prophesy. Wealth and riches are in my house. The wisdom of God 
is at work in me. The works of my hands are blessed. I move from glory to glory to glory to glory. The hand of God is upon me. The favor of God is upon me. The gift of the Lord that is deposited within me makes room for me and it ushers me into the realm of greatness. Pray and prophesy. Let the devil hear you. The Bible says, As I hear you say before my ears, so shall I do. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm lifted. I have the mind of Christ. I don't think failure. I don't think defeat in the name of Jesus. I'm an ambassador doing wonders for the kingdom. I lay hands on the sick and they are healed. I cast out devils. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. To preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to announce the acceptable year of the Lord and the year of vengeance of our God, to give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I refuse to be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul and guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I am planted in the house of God and I flourish in the courts of God. Even in old age, I shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. The Gentiles come to my light. Kings to the brightness of my rising. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my body. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my body. It quickens my body. No divination, no enchantment against me can stand. They shall gather. But as surely as they gather, they will scatter. Because the Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. How could I? Of what tomorrow brings. Yeah, I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. I have no worry. I live to praise your name. And I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Hallelujah. So that you are not confused about what to expect. And he told Job, he said, Hast thou commanded thy morning? Hast thou commanded thy morning? He said, the heaven, even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But Job, has thou commanded thy morning? 
have you instructed your future hallelujah I refuse to enter into a coincidental future no way no. hallelujah you may not be able to do something about your past but let me tell you something it is absolutely within your power God gave you anointing not for showmanship he gave you the capacity to create the only thing that can enter your future is the Word of God nothing else can enter hallelujah you can send the word the Bible says he sent forth his word hallelujah he sent forth his word listen every time you speak in faith believing I want you to realize that the word of God is creative in nature are you listening to me to create means to make substance out of nothing the word of God becomes that substance it says the word became flesh and dwelt among men every time the word of God materializes it becomes something the word can become anything the word became flesh it had substance listen Jesus is the word but you are the voice that will release that word John said I am the voice of one crying although I'm not the word but I'm the one who gives breath hallelujah that's the reason why the first characteristic of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence Whenever the devil wants to destroy the life of a man, he brings you to a point where you cannot talk again. And at that point, you are hoping and wishing and trusting that things will change. But can I tell you something? It is not within, it's not just left for God to change things. You've got to use your mouth as a weapon of creation. Son of man, he said, can these bones live? He said, only thou knowest. He said, really, it's not within if you want it to change prophesy he said and i prophesied as, as i was commanded there was a sound you're going to prophesy one more time to your life many of us have left our future as a barren wilderness you're just hoping one day that things will change no the fierceness of the world necessitates you rising up and beginning to practice the principles of the kingdom I like the scripture that Bishop read. He said, they go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. As many that appear before him in Zion. Part of the things that happen in Mount Zion is that you go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head sing one more time when i pray thank you for lifting 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 Say after me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say it like you believe it. I am blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm, anointed. I'm anointed. The Spirit of God is upon me. I'm a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I know the word. I understand the word. I believe the word. The word is working for me. God cannot lie. I believe his promises. I'm an ambassador doing wonders for the kingdom I have no covenant with death I have no covenant with sickness I'm the blessed of the Lord his hand is upon me I'm the glory of the Lord I'm the beauty of the Lord I'm well favored I'm like a well watered garden the Gentiles come to my light the kings to the brightness of my rising I'm distinguished I have the oil of gladness I know what to do there's no confusion in my life 
the word of god is a lamp to my feet is a light to my path through wisdom my life is built by understanding it is established through knowledge my life is filled with blessings say one more time through wisdom my life is built i cannot be foolish the wisdom of god is at work i understand the principles of the kingdom say i understand the principles of the kingdom i know what to do i know how to prosper i know how to live in hell i know how to be victorious i know how to live long i know how to command results the hand of god is upon me the word of god is making me wise it's giving me an inheritance i'm not an ordinary christian i'm supernatural the anointing is at work in me i have an unction from the holy one in the name of jesus give god a shout of praise says i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and then give you an inheritance listen listen if your life still remains in confusion then you do not understand the principles of the kingdom are you following me now the edge you have over carnal believers or unbelievers is the fact that you're not just walking in a system that you are hoping for things to happen by guesswork this is why we labor in the world day and night to see that you grasp an understanding everybody say understanding the bible says wisdom is the principal thing it says in all thy getting get understanding wisdom tells you what to do understanding tells you how to do it hallelujah one of the greatest blessings of the word of God is that it takes away ignorance. The Bible says, hear me, for an heir, although he's an heir, but as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave, though he be Lord of all. So although it is true that there are certain things that have been written concerning you, it takes understanding to walk into that experiential truth. This is what we seek to do. The word gives you understanding. There are a lot of people who just preach for effect. There are many people who preach just for swagger. But let me tell you something. If you are truly anointed, you will preach to create understanding. For as long as I do not know how to cook jollof rice, I, I will keep guessing. Is that true? Mix everything when, but when somebody who knows what to do, the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise the word of god is full of the compendium of people that came they saw and they conquered they have left a testament of their exploits so that we by diligently following in partnership with the holy spirit will do these things and jesus said verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me in other words he that believes in all these truths the works that i do he said he shall also do and greater works that's what the Bible says. It says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus that we should show forth that there be a manifestation of the things that we have been predestined to do. I told you this is a training ground. This is not a place where you just come and sleep or you come and laugh. No. This is a place where God gives you understanding. Say after me understanding. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When you have understanding, confusion ends in your life. When you have understanding, the same boisterous river called life, you will walk on it as if Satan does not exist. Hallelujah. We're going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding. Say it from your heart. Grant me understanding. These things that are still a mystery unto me. Open it up, oh God. The Bible says Jesus was going to the city called Emmaus with two men. 
and although he was the bread of life they did not understand but when he sat at table he broke the bread and their eyes were open say lord open my eyes open my eyes oh god when you know it you have known it forever when you know it it will tell in your life when you know it there's no confusion about it when you know it see he said they are life to those who find them you can pretend to find it but when you truly 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 when you truly know it it will show in your life say lord teach me teach me i'm willing to learn teach me open me up to the things of the spirit open me to the things that command true power the things that equip me to be an ambassador you have told me i'm a sign and a wonder say lord i don't want to keep seeing darkly open me up the bible says if the light in your eye be darkness how great is that darkness but it is the entrance not the reading not the explanation the entrance of the word that gives light pray i receive understanding i receive understanding that will put me in charge put me in command there is a generation waiting for my manifestation heaven is waiting for me there are lives that are depending on my understanding the things of the kingdom he reigns he reigns he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns our god is an awesome he reigns he reigns sing it with faith in your heart he was standing by her side Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You will be changed tonight in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. Greet one another. Hug one another. Tell them it's good to see you again. Bring out your notepads, your pen. Let's get to the business of the night. When you seek him early, you will find him. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of a parable of ten virgins. Hallelujah. And then the Bible tells us that five were what? They were all virgins, meaning they were all of the fold of God, same fold. But five were wise. You know, sometimes when I stand here, I just feel I should just open my heart. Look, let me tell you, the things you are learning that some of you take for granted, you will see people pay with their blood to receive it in the future. This is when you will appreciate it. You are not paying for it. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, five there was a time all the ten had the opportunity to get extra oil is that true there was a time that they could have gotten as much oil this is the time right now but while five were paying they all had oil 
They all had oil. Is that true? They were anointed. They had knowledge. But the remaining five said, uh -uh, the fierceness of time will require that we hold extra oil. And while the five held extra oil, the remaining people, the Bible says, although they were virgins, they were foolish. What was their foolishness? Refusal to pay attention. When the, those who sold this oil said, remember the Bible says, it is wisdom that stands on the street and cries. While men are passing, wisdom is saying, look, pay attention to me. We need a Sunday school department. Who did CEM? Please. Help that baby. Praise God. Are you listening to me? And then, all of them were gathered. What they did not know, listen, was that the oil was being used and would require refilling. And a time came when the lamp of the other five was dying. And the Bible says there was a sudden announcement. This is exactly how life will present itself. Sudden announcement. Here comes the bridegroom. Everybody, the Bible says the five who were wise, on the strength of their extra work, they now said, now we have enough for this occasion with the bridegroom. And then the remaining five, the remaining five, who did not pay attention the bible says they were they came to beg the other five and say please can you give me small oil they say no when it comes to this one we don't there are some things they cannot help you do listen let me tell you something brothers and sisters there are certain parts in life that nobody can help you cross no matter how they love you nobody can get born again for you is that true And the remaining five had to run out. I told you this thing. I'm giving you the scriptural basis. That when you don't pay attention to some things, no matter how far you go in life, the, the, the time they were supposed to run and go and buy, they didn't pay attention. Now they were forced to go out. And the Bible says, while they went, what happened? The door was closed. The door was closed. There are some things you are receiving right now. That you will bless God for tomorrow. I just sat this afternoon and I was just praying. I was just praying for everyone. And blessing God for the ability to hear and to receive the word of the Lord. Was that rain? If that's rain, bring the chairs inside. Bring the chairs. Just find anywhere and sit down. Come. Ushers, help them. Add chairs in the front. Add chairs everywhere. Come and sit down in the pulpit. Is the word that you are hearing now that will give you shelter tomorrow. Huh. You have been a shelter in the rain. You have been a doctor when in pain. Lord, you've been a listener when I call Oh Lord You've been my friend You have been A shelter in the rain You have been A doctor when in pain you have been a listener when I call. Oh Lord, you've been my friend. Listen, no matter what you are going through today, it's nothing compared to the whiplash that ignorance and lack of preparation will bring. I don't care what it is so long as you are breathing the Bible says a time will come people will look for death and it will run away what kind of suffering will make a man look for death sit down anywhere sit on the floor it's better to sit on the floor don't be ashamed of the camera we are not 
We are not playing. We are not acting film here. This is this is life. Find a place. Sit everywhere. Come and sit around. Occupy some of these seats if you can. Just leave the minister's seats. Sit any other place. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. And I take God seriously. Say it one more time in the name of Jesus. I treasure the truths that I'm hearing. They are life to me because I've found them. Hallelujah. I receive calls almost daily, text messages, hundreds of text messages every day. And the major issue is that many people call and they are asking for help. Families, believers who are born again, pastors, great men and women of God who are trying to find meaning as to why their lives are the way they are. Are you listening to me? Every time we counsel people, we counsel every Mondays. And there are families that come with unanswered questions. Listen. The level of unanswered questions that are falling upon people are becoming too serious. People, look, people are asking questions. Questions about their personal success questions about longevity questions about health science has failed the government has failed I was reading the paper about I mean um, online now about um, Egypt and the commotion that is happening and this country and all the things that are happening and tears just filled my eyes I said, Lord, I don't know what you did to me that made me to pay attention to your word. But I pray that the people in Koinonia will pay as much attention. Will pay as much attention. The Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. You see, let me tell you something. The days of begging people for the things of God are over. Are you listening to me? Where you tell people, oh, come will give you sweets, two, two tom tom, one vix, one tom tom for coming. And the people say, really? Will they give it? Or there's cold and they will prepare tea for you. And people come, they say, that tea I will take. Those days are over. Because whether or not, see, everybody in hellfire today believes in Jesus. I hope you know. The only mistake is that they believe too late. The Bible teaches us that there is a time. Please project Lamentations 3.28. Lamentations 3.28. I forbid you. I forbid you from failing in life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I forbid you from entering prostitution as a result of not listening to this message. I forbid our brothers from becoming arm robbers. Arm robbers are not just the ones who jump fence. I forbid you from going to a harbor list because you think the word of God is not working. Do you know the number of people that patronize harbor list, Bishop? It's not a hidden thing again. Pastors, prophets, apostles, everybody. Look at graduates running helter-skelter around Nigeria. Did you know that many people who run back to Zaria don't just run back because of desire. They run back because of the pain and the severity of the frustrations. But there is a way. God cannot leave people in the dark. 
there is a way listen is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out you must search it out you must search it out hallelujah you must search it out it is good for a man man doesn't mean a male figure just means a human being it is good for a man that he bear his yoke when when what is it about the youth of a man the bible says the glory of men is their strength is that true bear the burden pay the price that's why i say this every time you will quote me in the future no matter how you cry i don't care how you are looking at me i will say it hate me i will say it i will preach it we will file you when you become a wonder tomorrow you will look for us and say thank you see when you are in the training ground there are some things you don't think about you don't say ah my makeup this powder is ten thousand uh -uh. or you say kai this is my suit is uh -uh. when you are in the training ground you are there for business it is when you win that you will celebrate is that true now is the time for training So when we say pray in tongues, don't just say, ah, this fine guy is he looking. Pray! Open your mouth and pray. If you don't pray, life will whip you and you will still open that mouth. It will be open. The only thing is for what? Either to announce your pain and tragedy to the world that cannot help. Or to cry before God, who is our helper. I say, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help. See? If you really get this thing, you have gotten it forever. Are you hearing me? I want one lady who can cook. You know, don't you know it's not pride. God has blessed you. You know you whether you're a caterer or something. Stand up, just one. Who is that? No, no, I'm not going to say you cook. It's an illustration. So let's call the ones we are sure of. Opi, stand up. Oh yeah, now stand up. Look at this. Listen. If we ask you to make cake now, can you make it with absolute confidence? Ask me the same question. Ask me. No. I may try. It may work. I don't know. That's how many people's lives are. You tell them how can you lead a man from point a to p they say well i know see there is a level of persuasion i want you to get not just believe persuasion see how she just smiled about the cake thing but if they ask you to there are some of us you've made it once twice hallelujah it wasn't bad but you are not sure is that true when i saw this guy snapping and Oga John, I knew they knew what they were doing. Ask me to snap. All I know is to look at you and press that thing. Doesn't matter how it comes out. But these guys know something about perspective and angles and the rest. This is what I'm teaching you. Don't just enter the world blindly and hoping that things will change. There is a fierce world out there. Are you listening to me? You're not going to live in health by mistake. Please get this. Are you listening to me? Living in health is not a mistake. You're not going to be prosperous by mistake. One day you wake up and say, wow, so I made it. Mm -mm, it will never be by mistake. You're not going to know God by mistake. You won't have a glorious life and a ministry by mistake. You will not raise children after the fear of God by mistake. This thing of mistake or nemesis or if God wants it, he will do it. Stop that kind of language. It's not a good language. Say, if God really wants to bless me, after all, I didn't ask him for Jesus to die. So why would, if he, wouldn't he freely give me all things? See, if you don't pay attention, you will be surprised. Is that true? Now, Hope, let me ask you. Was there a time you could make cake but not very well? What did you do? Did you train yourself? You went for catering school, Mrs. Kait. Abi, now listen. You went, you she followed those who with faith and patience, leaving Sam around going to PZ every time because she was determined. Is that true? 
now she can bake cake for wedding somebody will give her fifty thousand overnight is that true and somebody will say i hope that the same uh, our birthday is the same no it's not the issue of birthday this is why people get angry at the success of their colleagues because they think life respects age ask elihu they say ah, when did the uh, promise become successful like this when the same koinonia the same in the same class taught by the same teacher somebody will get 100 somebody will get zero is that true god bless you please if you pay attention if you pay attention and you give it seriousness i promise you it's a guarantee i promise you you know what i said this thing right from when we used to meet at the back of chapel that we will be so successful and the beautiful part is that we will all know ourselves so that it will not be guesswork you will know what you did you know when you ask a pretty lady you say i, I see how fine you're looking what is response you say is god bro. yes it's god but let me explain to you is god god gave grace you took advantage of that grace Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. It's God that gives children. It's the woman that carries the gift. Correct? So that tomorrow, when you are blessed, it will not be a mistake and the purpose of the blessing is to make others a blessing that's why your blessing can never be by mistake god will teach you the steps and you can guide somebody tomorrow some of you you are looking at me now some of you will be the ones on air presidents of nation will come to see the hand of god upon your life and when they ask you you'll be talking to other people when you see somebody sagging his jeans and laughing say look for your own good you better wash this childishness and sit down in one place it's not the issue oh, i can do both it's the matter of the heart sit down and allow god to build you hallelujah proverbs 18 we've been considering the su subject of success i tell you my spirit is fired up proverbs 18 we began two weeks ago by talking about the spiritual dimension of success give me this mountain hallelujah played the documentary and we thought i told you that success is spiritual everything life in itself is spiritual don't let secular humanists deceive and confuse you life is spiritual hallelujah then we considered the place of wisdom the dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by studies the dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten by accumulation of experiences job said this wisdom is not found in the line in the land of the living hallelujah today i want to talk still building on success what do you have in your house proverbs 18 i want to share a powerful secret and i trust god that will pray proverbs 18 verse 16 Proverbs 16. Let's read together. You can look up. One to read. And bring it him before great men. One more time. Now, where a man is, put your name. Ready to read? One, two. Don't say my gift. My is not your name. This is English. One, two, go again. Mean it from your heart now. One, two, go. Father, bless your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, give us understanding. Let the fruits of this teaching speak. Let it abide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the gift of a man can do what? The word make there is create. It can create space for him in life and usher him. Can we get it from NIV or New Living Translation? Anyone? Uh, 
Ah, it's that's that's not is that that's not the version. That's a different 1816. A gift does what? Is is not saying a gift like a bribe. No. Just forget it's not like a bribe. We are not talking of Nigeria here. Are you following me now? Because many of you, that's what you think I'm talking about. No, I'm not saying a gift like a seed. Huh? No. A gift, the gift of a man. It says what, my dear? It opens the way for who? Not the giver's friend. Not the giver's brother. It opens a way for what? And does what? And ushers him into the presence of it says the gift of a man whether there is space or not the gift can push people and create space for him and usher him into the place of the great a man's gift can make room have you ever heard people say no space have you heard that language sorry no space if there was space would have helped you the bible says a man's gift has the ability to push people and make space. Not only that, when other people are segregating, it can usher him to the place of the great. Hallelujah. It can usher him to the place of the great. Write it quickly. What is a gift? God giving abilities. God giving abilities, your potentials, God giving abilities. That's simply what a gift is your God giving ability. The Bible says if you take it seriously, it can create space for you in life. This night, we're not just talking of gift, we're also talking of skill. What's your skill? Your learned abilities, acquired abilities. The difference between a gift and a skill is that one is God-given. It can only be developed. The other one can be learned. It can be acquired. Both of them have the capacity to bring you before great people. Say amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us of an interesting person called Joseph. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he had Joseph, by the way, please... Joseph was not a dreamer, for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Joseph was not a... There was nothing spectacular about the dreams of Joseph. As far as we know in the Bible, he had only two dreams. How many times have you had it? Have, have you dreamt? Are you a dreamer? So Joseph was not... His gift was not dreaming. His gift was the ability to interpret dreams. Are you following me now? So the Bible says that... Because of that ability, his brothers envied him. Many things happened. And then the Bible, I'm just rushing now. The Bible says when he was put, remember when, when um, Potiphar's wife and all her story, 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 let's just jump it. He found himself in the prison. Is that true? And the Bible says when he found himself in the prison, there was the wine presser and the baker. But he realized that he had something. Is that true? Are you following me now? When it was time for God to bless him, God made the king to dream and close the heavens over the sorcerers and the magicians. Are you listening to me? They got up in the morning and tried to do their enchantment as usual. No way. Because it was time for God to bring a man into success. But God realized that a gift can open a way what way the way of the prison nothing else would have opened that way for joseph because they were not planning to bring him out is that true there are many people today who do not realize that if they take advantage of the gift of god that is in them it has the ability to take them from where they are into realms that they never dreamt possible and tonight this is our prayer We've been examining the principles of success. There is a dimension of success that only your gift can bring to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your gift. This dependency attitude of Nigerians 
is what has stopped them from exploring their gift. Ale, ale baka musamu. Have you heard that statement? What is it in English? May God give you so that we will get. It's, it's a wrong concept of dependence. That's how many of us are waiting. Say, so, oh boy, just get work. Once you are there, just remember me. Your boy is there. See, let me tell you. If that is your mindset, you are going to suffer in this Nigeria. And in case you think you will run abroad, you will still suffer. There are still people, there are people under the bridge of every nation, true or false. Every nation in the world has, has bridge and there are people that sleep there. It's just that films don't carry it. There is ghetto everywhere, true or false. So, many of us have this escapism mind. You are just trying to get lottery and say, oh God, let this green American lottery just happen. They would go and see how many Nigerians live like, like outcasts abroad. Because they believe. I've told you, there is nowhere called greener pastures. Greener pastures is the word of God. The Bible says, he makes me lie down. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Many people want to run to delta or rivers. Say, ah, oh yeah, we're coming to chop our share of the national cake. Go and find out how many poor people were born and bred in that same land. Are you listening to me? Everybody say, I have a gift. Say it, I have a gift. It can make room for me. It can take me from where I am to where God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Second Kings. Somebody is catching this thing and leaving some realms forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Catching this and leaving some realms forever. Hallelujah. Who would have known that comedians will be paid millions in Nigeria today? Look up please everybody. How many of you used to play football and you come back home and they've kept the cane to flog you? As soon as you are entering, there's a way you greet your father. He says, hey, you already know that this night. But today, that same football, are you listening to me? That same football has blessed people. Comedians, for heaven's sake, they won't come until you give them 2.5 million or 5 million to come and talk. They just crack a joke. Hallelujah. There are artists today. Artists today. Those who draw caricature for banks. They are paid millions of naira. Millions of naira. Listen. If you get what I'm teaching you this night. Something will happen in your life. Some of you it will happen instantly. Young man called Gray Farah. Many of you know him. Gray Farah at age 10 was wondering what to do with his life. And he found out that he liked stones and he decided to start painting stones so that people would use it to just, you know, just press their books and their doorposts. And people started looking at him and laughing. Every time people saw it, they just laughed. And they said, well, let's just help this small boy. Little did they know that that was a champion in the making. A time came, he started packaging those stones very well. At age 12, Gray Farah became a millionaire. At age 14, he was seated in the board of directors of 14 companies. Age 14. How old are you? Are you listening to me? I want you to know that if you take advantage of the gift, the gift of God is his seed in you that is supposed to help you enter the realm where you have influence and honor to legislate on behalf of heaven. Are you listening to me? Jeremiah Gang, I've told you, Jeremiah Gang used to be in Joss. That guy they call Jeremiah Gang. Now, um, whether they are serving Satan or God is not the issue now. Are you listening to me? The issue is that the gifts were developed. You, you, get, you get the point? The guy you call M.I., I've said it, Jesse Jacks, were Sunday school mates. 
Why all of us were looking at ladies, eh, pastors, daughters, these, those guys were building their potentials. Just like some of you were doing. You will go to church, you won't sit down, you will use your offering money, buy ice cream, be playing ball at the back of the church. That's what you were doing. Whereas others were hearing the word and going. See the difference, right? Are you listening to me? That these things have been perverted does not negate the fact that if they are gifts, they will still bring men to honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 2 Kings 4, the story of an interesting woman. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. So the, the person was the son of a prophet. Look at me. I want to tell you something. Maybe I'm going to create another controversy now this night. Listen, that your man of God or your spiritual father or mentor is anointed does not automatically guarantee that you will enter success. Did you hear what I'm saying? The Bible says this guy was the son of who? That means it does not respect anointing. Hmm. Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest what thy servant, that thy servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is come to take my two sons to be slaves. And Elisha said to her, listen now. This woman was in a situation where she needed a miracle. Two of her children were going to go as slaves. Hallelujah. What did Elisha tell her? He said, what shall I do for you? And he asked a question. He said, tell me, what hast thou in thy house? What do you have? Where? in your house and the bible says there is this treasure in this house this earthen vessels he said what do you have the woman had been running helter skelter running helter skelter and she met the prophet and the prophet said what do you have in your house could it be that many of you who have been running helter skelter or many families need to calm down and look at what you have in your house i've learned by experience and by the word that the blessing of a man is always not far from him it's just that there is no discernment to recognize it. Are you listening to me? Yes, the blessing of a man is always not far from him. Sometimes it's ridiculously close. You may not even know. There were many people who walked with Jesus, yet they were looking for miracles and until Jesus went to heaven, they were not blessed. Because they did not realize your miracle can be so close you may not know the bible says and she said thy handmaid had not anything in the house except what a pot of oil you see how she didn't place value on it the bible says she said thy handmaid had what nothing nothing that means this thing is not of worth, but just for the sake of answering you, let it be there. Thy handmaid had nothing. There are many of you that God has given you certain things and you have been calling it nothing. 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 The gift of a man. Whether it's a spiritual gift, is whatever kind of gift. The Bible says the gift of a man can single-handedly pick you where you are, take you out and exalt you. It can. It can. I tell you, it can. Hallelujah. The man called Reinhard Bonke. He said he was considered by everybody to be a dollar. What people call a dollar. Complete dollar. Dollar IQ low. Everything low. But one day he discovered that there was the gift of God in his life. And today, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world celebrate this man. Call Reinhard Bonke. His name is synonymous to soul winning because he discovered the gift and it created space for him among the great. It ushered him. When you are mentioning great people in history, you will mention him. Men who have done great things for the kingdom. Are you listening to me? In history, there's a woman called Mother Teresa. Didn't have the ability to heal the sick and do all of this, but she discovered that she had a gift in her. She refined it to a point that she gave it and gave her life and forever history will remember her. Are you hearing me? 
the gift of a man. I want you to know that there is an ability in you. Nobody here is a biological accident. I know you've been hearing it. Ah, your parents planned for four children and you are the fifth one. You just came. And every time they see you, they say, see, we didn't prepare for you. So you, you better know this thing. You are stubborn. No wonder we didn't prepare for you. And for some of us, these words have entered us. But I'm speaking to you tonight. That out of the six billion people in the earth, there is still space for those who are ready to make their... See, at the top, there is space. The congestion is always below. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you can pay the price to rise to the top, you will sit there and be wondering. 90% of the world's wealth is controlled by less than 10% of the world's population. And they left the remaining 10%. They spread it across and flung some in Africa and everybody is running like rats. Whereas somebody can arise. A man called Wole Soinka got up and looked and said, look, the boundaries of Africa will not stop me. He knew that he had something. See, I want you to be persuaded. Persuaded. It always does not look like it can make you great until you see the way men celebrate it. Matthew Ashimolo hawk bread in this area. Some of our parents bought bread from him. While they were eating it, he was prophesying, Lord, the world will hear me. You'll say, I bring bread, 20 naira you take. Yet, this guy was moving. Within a short period of time, now he has commanded what we call apostolic territorial legislation. That's what he's doing in London. But acres and hectares of land that they would never give to a black person. And he's legislating on behalf of heaven. A man called Sondia Delaja, till date he does not speak fluently. He got up and went to a communist country, Ukraine, and stayed there. Let a part of those who led, right now he's among the fourth most influential people in that state. 80% of the people in his church are whites. He has led a revival and broken some barriers. Say after me, my gift. Say it, my gift will make room for me. Let me share with you a little story. They know about it years ago i went to a particular bank in this country to go and beg for loan i just entered promising i believe god spoke in tongues fasted prayed i got up you know there's a way they can look you see let me tell you people have be careful i'm warning you now in advance be careful the way you, you turn people down. Because let me tell you, it does not show. The Bible says, now it does not yet appear. Went to squat in my friend's house in Abuja. I got up, went to the bank, met them. Told them I was begging for loan. These people dribbled me, dribbled me, made a fool out of me, embarrassed me in the bank. I, didn't, I said, what is all this thing? And I laughed. I said one day they will call me are you hearing that one day what's the name of this guy that ran for second uh, vice president Tunde Bakari. a bank came and met him and said sir we are begging you to collect a loan of 10 million dollars we want to give you no capital the name of the capital is human capital do you know what human capital is you and your reputation is what will be a, a collateral. So banks are looking for Dangote and looking for this. And then some of you run there and they say, get out of this place. We are looking for people who have used their gifts. Tell yourself, no man will mock your God in your lifetime. This is what has happened to some of you. You see your father stand, no rent. And the landlord will stand and blast all of you blast you say look at you pretty for nothing eh? you are all these kind of nigerian people just laugh and say you will invite him when you are cutting the scissors of the duplex you are building for your parents the gift of a man 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 
makes room for him. I'm speaking to some of you. Some of you think, don't just think I'm motivating you. I'm speaking to your spirit. I told myself I will never go anywhere where anybody will look and I'll have to chicken out and hide myself. I have something. I have something. I have something. When you find it, it so happens that God carved your own like your fingerprints. God is not a fool. He will not put competition around. He gave you your uniqueness. What is your uniqueness? When you know your uniqueness and you are persuaded about it, you found your secret of glory in life. Did I do something here? I think I've done something here. Was it me? Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have seen people in this life that years ago, they would look at me. They wouldn't, some of them, <laughs> let me tell you something. Ah, life. Somebody who will be driving you today, tomorrow will be the one who it will be the honor. I've gone to homes that I went years ago. Years ago. They were looking at me like some of these are serious people. But now, when they hear you are coming, it's as if God is coming. Say, say after me, the gift of a man. Yes. The gift of a man makes room for him. Makes room. The brothers of Joseph did not realize his gift. They didn't know it would be an honor one day for them to see their own brother. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One time they went and suddenly they found out that their brother was now the prime minister in Egypt. Could it be that some of you who are sitting down today, somebody who has looked at you and said, Tolu, one day the person will say, Tolu, please talk to XYZ for us. May God make you a wonder. May God stop you from being small. What is that gift? What is that gift? For some of you is wisdom. When you think of Benny Hinn, you think of the healing anointing. When you think of Aura Roberts, you think of healing. When you think of JJ Okocha, you think of football. Mark Zuckerberg, you think of IT. What is your uniqueness? Define what makes you different. That's what the world will pay for. What makes you different? The greatness is not in your similarity. The greatness is in your difference. When you master your difference, you will exchange it for honor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. The world is full of people. What is your difference from others? Do you know it? Do you even believe it? There are many musicians in this country equally anointed. But when you call Sinach, there is a, there is a, a carving. She has carved a brand for herself. When you mention Frank Edwards, they, they not only discovered their gifts, they discovered what was unique about that gift. That's what makes you priceless. When you discover that gift, you will know that you are not one of the many people roaming around the earth. Oh, there is something about your life. You may be in the same class. You may be in the same office. But let me tell you, you are not the same. You are not the same. You may be doing ministry. Everybody is doing prophetic ministry. Everybody is doing apostolic ministry. Everybody is doing evangelical ministry. What is it about yours? What is it about yours? Every great man in life not only discovered his or her gift but the uniqueness about that gift what is your uniqueness what makes you stand out from the rest i'm asking you and god is asking you what makes you stand out from the remaining people listen when you find your gifts the next step is to begin to refine it this is the hardest part because your gift at its default state is not good enough to make you marketable. Did you hear what I'm saying? Refine yourself. Build yourself. A lot of us don't do this. Christians are very, very, very lazy people. You know what made us lazy? The fact that there is something called the favor of God. 
there is something called the wealth of the wicked that will be transferred to the righteous and people just say my wealth come find your way into my pocket <laughs> look let me tell you people have been confessing that thing from the day you were born and they thought it just works like that till today it has not come when the bible says the wealth of the wicked people just people just just craft that thing and pick out what they want the wealth of the wicked will come into the bible says god give it to a man that is good in his side wisdom and he said to the unbeliever he give it to heap and to travail so that he will bring it it is your wisdom hallelujah what is your gift what is your uniqueness what makes you stand out what makes you stand out among all of the graduates in Nigeria, what do you think will make you get a job? What do you think will make you become a CEO? What do you think will make you become an uncommon? I preached a message, extra, what did I, what, extraordinary anointing. What makes you extraordinary? Hallelujah. What makes you extraordinary? It's not your place of birth. It's not even whether you are from a royal family or not. What makes you different from other people? If I write a book today, what is the difference between my book and that of David Ibiome or that of Bishop Oyedeko or that of Paul Enenche? What is the difference? Many of you like doing the same things. That's why you are not moving anywhere. This is how a lot of people, we like, we think it will work because you are doing copy and paste. There is beauty in being unique. Are you listening? There are even, even among bad people, there are some arm robbers that are notable because they were unique. Their degree and strategy of arm robbery was so touching. They said, no, I won't steal like the rest. This thing is common. There is a strategy. This follow, follow attitude is good to follow people, but you must follow with wisdom. Many of you, every time God is telling you move left and you see a crowd moving right, you think you are wrong. A whole nation can be wrong. That a thing is popular does not mean it is right. The path of greatness is a lonely path. Few people follow it. That's why you will not find many people. You will think you are making a mistake. Wait until you arrive there. Everybody will turn and say, ah, I need pastors in that journey. Hallelujah. What is your gift? Do you realize that if you take that gift, some of us is plotting, just plotting. Do you know that if the Lord anoints it and wisdom comes upon that gift, you will be able to establish something that will make you so influential you can legislate for the kingdom? Are you listening to me? A lot of people say, Billy Graham, all the presidents go to greet him. But what people do not know is that it was part of his life's goal. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. His, he really didn't believe his gift was just normal evangelism. He believed that he was called to evangelize to great people. He sent them hundreds of telegrams again and again. They kept bouncing him. He didn't stop. What you see or what you have seen is the reward of many years. There are some of you, God has spoken a lot of things. God has told you. Some of you will own banks. Some of you will own corporations. Hallelujah. You started selling recharge card, nothing happened. People just say, and you know believers have this ugly way. Once you start something, nobody buys it. They say, oh God, leave this thing. If God is in it, speed will come, favor will come. It is lack of the understanding of the principles of the kingdom. You can never know success until you know failure. In the school of greatness, your greatest asset is your failure. Are you listening to me? Are you following me? I'm teaching you something very powerful. My gift can make room for me. My gift can make room for me. Worship team. Roti me is rehearsing all the time. Hallelujah. He's been with us for years. 
we've, we've gone every, I know how much he has his money because he believes this is a this is a master student I think he should have rounded up his masters but he just believes that there is something upon this and he's taking it all the way tomorrow presidents will call him and he will just be playing and they will sign checks of millions and you'll be wondering and saying ah, ah, just keyboard you you play your own as you are playing they just they point they will even talk to you they'll just say this way go out those who do decoration do you know there are those who do decoration for presidential figures there's this guy called yam yal yam press daughter what's his name i i heard that he was in zaria here is that true now he got up with his publishing and today he has become a multi-millionaire yet there were others who started before him this afternoon we went to pray for um, one of our ladies father and she can while we were passing somewhere we saw this i mean we we're talking about people who were pushing who used to push wheelbarrow jakes was saying ah this wheelbarrow business used to sell before and we're talking and then wale pointed one man's shop and said this man it was by pushing that wheelbarrow right now he has one of the largest shops say i will not let men despise my gift say it many of you have stopped developing your gift because you have been lied to some of you can cook and all you can cook is amala and you you have a dream of having somewhere just amala people love as a yourself Abba, you want to disgrace the world see greatness lies in the bosom of those who can go the extra mile with their gifts refuse to let men talk you down it's better to take a step and fail honorably they will clap for you the one who tried and failed is better than the one who didn't try and is just making noise. Oh, pass the ball to number five. Ah, you would have just passed that in now. If you are taking that penalty this way, look at simple penalty. See, you see goalkeeper talk is cheap. Somebody is sweating in the field for 90 minutes. Somebody else is talking. Say if it was me, that thing, the way he did it like you, that it would have been a goal now. That's how many people in life are. How can a graduate not get a job? How can blah, 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 and they're not doing anything? You're in 200 level, your lecturer told you, ah, you're a nice student. Say, I cannot understand why graduates are not getting jobs. Then you finish and carry your CV to the same man that commended you. <laughs> and he says, get out of my office. You're like, ah, ah. Say after me, my gift will make room for me. Say my gift will make me great. Say one more time, my gift will make me great. Yes. Some of you are architects. You are good, but not very good. And God is telling you, refine that gift. One day you will get, let me tell you something. Once you can provide solution, nobody cares about your age or what you can do or who, are you hearing me? The gift of a man defies race and age and anything. Once you see people discriminating you, your gift is not notable enough. When your gift is notable enough, you will break every kind of barrier. Hallelujah. What do you have in your house? And the woman said, nothing. Probably somebody said, me, I can just make people laugh. That's my own. Everybody calls me a dollar. Zero in math, zero in English in such as uh, uh, you know just anything literature but you can speak small at least make people laugh why don't you say lord if you can use this this is what reinhard bonke said he said lord if you can use this then use me do you know your beauty too is a gift hello there are cynical guys that anytime they see a pretty lady they're just angry why i don't know say look don't think because you are beautiful in this place beauty is nothing it's a lie beauty is something beauty is a gift the book of esther there was no pastor no prophet nothing just a beautiful woman she was the ambassador of god many of you feel guilty for being fine as if you gave back to yourself it has happened it has happened cherish it build it and use it for the glory of god don't use it to go to men in TJ Palace. Tell yourself, this beauty, could it be? 
that God will make you marry the minister of finance so that when you are there as Esther when they want to cut corners you say uh -uh. do you believe this I want you to be wealthy I want you to be blessed don't let anybody fool you that money will take you to hell it's not true money only amplifies what you are if you are a thief money will make you a bigger thief if you are if you are immoral money will give you more options you can now rent a bigger hotel if you love God and have a desire to advance his kingdom money will make you do that better you will build roads you will build schools when I went to Sheik, I was sharing with them. I said, one of my dreams in life is to have a very big hospital. This is why you need to be successful. Say, I will be successful. Don't feel guilty about it. Say it. Say, I'll be rich. I'll be blessed for the kingdom. Yes. Can you give God your beauty? Yes, I have nothing but everybody keeps telling me I'm a pretty person. Why don't you bring it and say, Lord, you can use this anoint it let this beauty make room for me and take me to a place where i'm in a position of influence to legislate for the kingdom some of you are very intelligent people are sweating reading overnight you wake up that morning one hour to the exam and browse and get a you think it's ordinary it's an ability of god why don't you stretch it through and say i will get to a position where I will do great things. When they make me a vice chancellor because of my academic prowess, I will now legislate on behalf of heaven. When they bring the names of people who don't qualify, we kick them out and say, no, this person may be poor, but he deserves a chance. Give him a chance. Are you listening to me? Some of you will put scholarships for less privilege. Some of you will name it after your accomplishments. You will be so great, they will name a foundation after you. Joshua Selman Foundation. No, no, look. It will happen. The beauty of success is that it depends on you and God. It will happen. It will happen. You know how many women have named their children Joshua? Look at how long Matthew's surname is Ashimo Lowo. The whole world is calling it. They have never complained that it's too long. When you become great, when you become great in life, when you become great in life, I watched a DVD of Apostle Johnson Suleiman. He went for a crusade. When he came down, I saw how the God, they interviewed him in CNN for 12 minutes. Nobody will say you are a Nigerian or you are an African. No. Listen, are you going to remain where you are? Are you not seeing your family members crying? Is it not obvious that they need a savior? How many of you, you have seen your father come under pressure? No rent, no nothing. What are you doing about it? told myself I'll come to a point in my life where I'll put all my family members on perpetual salary for their lifetime till they go to be with Jesus Christ brothers how will you like that kind of thing if wishes were horses beggars will beg to ride but wishes are not horses but you can turn that wish into a horse by applying these principles I'm teaching you and you will ride on it gloriously what do you have in your house this is what God is asking you what do you have what do you have in your house don't sit down and be admiring great people and say hi lucky for them oh, you people have gone don't pray for us say I'm going to do something say it if you know your uniqueness, how many books are you reading? How many books? How many books are you reading? Readers are leaders. How many books are you reading in the area of your call? If you are snapping this camera, if you cannot mention five people in this country that are good or around, I know you are not serious. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
You is that God is calling me into a healing ministry. Show me whose DVDs you have. Who God has called into that healing ministry. Where you are, you are reading how they started. When you go to my house, you don't find, okay, there's, there, there are two movies now. They did, the Lord of the Ring is still there. Then this Tyler Perry's film. Menace. I can't remember again. I can't even remember the name. But there are people that have modeled what I see God making me become. And I sit down. I study. I want to empower God's people. I want to make them ambassadors. Set them on fire. Do you have a unique grace? Do you have a unique gift? Are you doing anything about it? Some of you just sit down and keep pitying yourself and disturbing those who are moving towards their destiny. Guy, this life self. Now, wow. If we were abroad by 80 years, they would have given us this. If you listen, I'm not laughing this night. If you don't stop that attitude, you will find that you are 50 years and you are still talking like that. Now, you know, there are some people who believe it's just nemesis. That's just how life is for us. Nothing used to work in our family. My sister too is like that. No job, no marriage. Me, ma'am, like that. No job, no marriage. As if you do not know that you can change it. You go to a place of employment, they kick you out, laugh, and say one day we will drink tea with the CEO of this company. We went to Shika and one, one, one man just stopped us. One guard man that is tried where he was doing his job. The guy stopped us and said, we are not going anywhere. We were trying to plead. He said, we are not going anywhere. And Shade's husband is like the ogre of the whole, you know, the security company that employs the people. So I called Shade. I said, Todd, they've stopped us. So we wanted to go and pray for our father. And she was just happy. She just got one bigger guy. The guy just marched and came. When they came, at once they allowed us and we waved the man and we left. Be careful what you call impossible because somebody will come and make it possible. Would have, there were some people who were waiting there. But when Chade's husband came, he saluted him and we were happy. We were partakers of the glory. It taught me a lesson. It taught me a powerful lesson. Impossible is a relative statement. They can close the door for others and say, sorry, it cannot be opened. Sorry, it cannot be opened. You will be amazed to see how they will open it for somebody. I told you there are some people that bank on Saturdays and Sundays too. Is that true? It's only for the masses that bank ends 3 p.m. on Friday. They say, oh yeah, go out, let's lock this bank. But there are people on Sunday because of one man, they'll open the bank and say, your excellency, sir, please. Come we went to Starcoms and I saw one account officer sitting there. Why will a bank give an account officer to come and sit in a, in, a, in a telecommunications company? Some of you, you will have in your own house. You say, so how much are we sending for this school now? Send 10 million for this school, 10 million for this one, 50 million for this. I hear that there is a church building. Send 15 million for it. God punish the devil. Let me talk like Dr. <laughs> Let me talk like Dr. He likes to say, God punish the devil. Say, I'll be great in life. I'm inspiring you tonight. This was the decision I made years ago. Let me tell you the truth. This decision will cost you something. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you willing to pay the price? The woman said, nothing except a little cruise of oil. What did the prophet tell her? He said, go and borrow. You, you are not permitted to borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. What are vessels? Books. DVDs experiences sit down under the feet of mentors and great people that have gone ahead and listened. i've told you this attitude of saying we are all equal we are equal in christ but when it comes to the school of greatness wisdom is ability to recognize difference there are people i will never no matter how crazy i am i will never if I ever get to a meeting and they are seated there, I must salute and recognize them before speaking. Wisdom, Mike Modok says, is the ability to recognize difference. Many of you don't know difference at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Doctors don't go about looking for sick patients. They establish an institution and say, if you are sick, find your way here. Is that true? If you really want to be treated, what will you do? You have to go to the hospital. Is that true? Many of us want the doctors to come and find us and treat us. Sorry, life does not work like that. Get up and begin to do something about your life. Make up your mind. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. How can a young man be sleeping by 10, 11, 12? You yawn by 12 when others are already writing their names in time. And you, you wonder why things will not work for you. Let me tell you, God is a merciful God, but he's a just God. I know the number of times I sleep in a day. I'm always building myself. Nobody will deceive me. Compared to where I'm going, this is just a step out of the cave. Are you listening to me? This is rehearsals. I tell people, ministry has not started yet. When we get to that level of kingdom influence, where we will not talk too much, at that time I won't be shouting like this again. It's when you don't have results, you shout too much. Charles and Francis Hunter say one miracle is worth a thousand words. If Michael Jackson only said, Jesus is Lord. That statement with that level of influence will bring more harvest than what we'll be doing every week in Zaria here for one year. Is that true? Everybody say influence. This is what your gift. Let me tell you very quickly before we pray. What your gift can do for you. Number one. Your gift and your skills when refined and developed will create opportunities. Everybody say opportunities. Your gift, your skill when refined when developed my friend a military man took me to a place in abuja when i entered that place is a is a spa place a beauty place they took me there to barbie ah when i entered that place i knew that there was difference between clipper and clipper barbie saloon and barbie saloon barbers and barbers The way they treated me when I sat down and they barbed me. In my mind, I was saying, is this me? Hallelujah. When they finished, they put a lotion. I don't know what it is. My head just foamed like Father Christmas. And they told me, enter this room. I entered. I was enjoying. I don't care what it is. I don't need to know. I will employ somebody who knows when I'm blessed. Hallelujah. And when they washed my head and I finished, they appreciated me. Ah! I said, what kind of place is this? And they showed me the owner, a Lebanese woman who was also walking quietly. Nobody even knew. When we finished everything, time came for bill. It said 600 naira. For barbing, That's what you will pay when you meet someone who has refined his gifts. The same food, a cup of coffee in Transcorp Hilton is 2005. Everybody say cup of coffee. How much is coffee? Next cafe, this type they shake there. How much? 50 naira. If you price 20 naira. Yet it's the same thing you pay. This decoration you are seeing. There are people who can decorate over 2 million, some even 5 million. You will name your price by your refining of your gifts. Write it, your gift and your skill will create opportunities. If Rotimi continues this a day, see, how the opportunity will come is none of your business. Just know it will come. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of how a child. So also you do not know the way of God. How it will happen is none of your business. Hallelujah. One of my uncles called me. My father's friend. Years ago when they come to our house, we are the ones who run to go and wash the car. How are you? We go and wash. I said, no problem. I will wash it. He called me of recent and said, ah, ah, I've been hearing a lot. We are seeing the things you are doing. I said, bless God. Oh. 
say when will you come now we need to discuss there's something we need to sit down man to man i said that's right <laughs> when when your father starts talking to you like that it's a sign that you are making progress when your father says there are some things i want to discuss with you but i when let everybody sleep come out clap for yourself you are trying that's that's a sign when your father says look there are some secrets we don't tell people who are the people when your gifts start showing there are doors that will start opening are you hearing what i'm saying there are many of you you think you are too young to enter some doors no sir no ma if you if you refine yourself i promise you that door will open there are places i've entered today by the grace of god i know there is no human way under the sun under the sun that i will enter that place hallelujah i have a gift laugh at me the gift is in me you will never go out god gave it to me the way god did it god put the gift the only way to enjoy the gift is to carry me along with the gift you can't carry the gift and leave me there are people today if the gift of god was not in my life they will see me and just his and pass but god orchestrated it you must need me because you need that gift Oh, I celebrate his name. That's why I rejoice. Such as I have. Go and borrow vessels. This is what the prophet said. Sister, borrow vessels. Read the books. You may, if you borrow vessels, the gift will expand. The oil was there. The problem was there was no vessel. Esther was beautiful. But her beauty was not yet sufficient to take her to the king's palace. Is that true? She was beautiful. Many of you are sitting on gifts today that you are paying for. During my birthday, the things that people brought for me, it was as if it was wedding. You know how they finish wedding? And you pack the gifts. I just sat down. I say years ago, I did my birthday alone. Ah, somebody's after two weeks. You say, ah, is it not your birthday? Your birthday, 25th, is it not? Am I wrong? Say you are right. So you say, oh, happy birthday. But there is something that can happen. One year before your birthday, somebody is preparing because of your gift. Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God speaking to this night? Who is God telling tonight that if you can pay attention, we are discussing on the subject of success. Some of you have been sitting on treasure. You are in the middle of an ocean begging for water. You are in the middle of an ocean. You are an artist. You are watching on TV drawings that are not half your capacity. They are rewarding the people whereas you are there. When I watch preachers on TV preach, I tell you with all humility, I just get up and I rejoice. I say, God, you tried for me. We're on our way coming. And I get up, I rejoice. I say, Lord, I may not know everything, but at least I know something. I know something that I can preach anywhere and not be ashamed. Come on now. Some of you, the business acumen that you have, even the CEOs of banks and cooperatives do not have. Listen, that you have not entered that place does not mean you don't have it. Who would have known that Zuckerberg's gift was so good like this? It takes time to prove it. But that does not mean it's not there. Some of our worshippers, some of these people you are seeing, the gifts that they have, you will see them tomorrow and say, I know this person. I know that person. Abel Damina was born in Samina Kahir. Right here in this area. Who cares where I was born now? Who cares where I was raised? Even if it was with firewood we used to prepare and cook. It's, it's the, look, when you are blessed, you are blessed. When you know it, you have known it. If it opens the door, it will open the door forever. It will open the door this week and close it next week. Say, I have a solution for the world. Say it, I have a solution. Some of you are music groups. Some of you are individuals. Who has talked you down? I'm speaking to somebody this night. Who has talked you down? Somebody ate your food and said, God forbid, if your restaurant is the only one, I will just, let me, I will learn how to cook by myself. Allow the person. Who has talked you down? I want you to know tonight 
that the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of creativity. Bel Bezalel. That spirit came upon him and he was given the mission of crafting. I'm speaking to you. Who has talked you down, my brother? Who has talked you down? See, many of you see us today and you think we were born this way. Wait till you hear some stories. When you see great people, you think they had opportunities to just climb. Let me tell you, it's not true. You don't want to know the things they have survived. Greatness lies in the bosom of those who have survived what others cannot survive. I don't care what you think you are going through. I, I slept on speakers and amplifier. It will never happen again forever. There were days we did not eat. There were days we trek distances, but we did not allow what happened to us. I, there was a day I trekked from the roundabout where Chiki Republic, I passed Chiki Republic, I was hungry, I could not do anything about it. I trekked from there to aviation. What have you gone through that you think is stopping you? Some of you is complex just inferiority complex every time you want to rise the devil keeps telling you you know you did this you know you are this you know you are that we are here tonight to call that devil a liar are you hearing what i'm saying we are calling that devil a liar there are some of you that the gift god has given you is a supernatural prophetic grace some of you is an apostolic ability every time in your dreams you see the whole world some of you are book writers that will write on common books gift of a man. He said borrow vessels. When she borrowed the vessels she entered, I said lock your door. There are some trainings you don't do in the open. You must close your door. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you that like open, there are some times you need to close your door because what God will do in you is only him that can do alone. You will close your door. And she began to pour it. Do you know how, how many vessels? The pain it took for her to carry the vessels. While she was carrying the vessels, she said, I'm on, I'm on my way out. Never, never to be in this situation again. You are the solution to the prayer of your families. Some of you, many of them never experienced some things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But could it be that God brought you tonight to speak to you? There are some of you who have been saying, oh, the government is not giving job, this and that. Could it be that God is trying to speak to you? I'm challenging you. Take what I'm saying seriously because we are going to pray. We will soon rise up to pray. And when it's time to pray, I want you to pray your life out. I told myself I am great. I'm great. I'm great. Joshua Selman, you are great. I speak it to myself every day. The world will hear you. You are a sign and a wonder. The anointing that is upon you is not common. Don't trivialize it. Give God thanks but celebrate it. If it's common, go and get it in the market. Hallelujah. The gift that God has given you, Oga John. There are photographers around but it's not common. Believe it and take it seriously. There are some of you that have all kinds of gifts. You are administrators, uncommon administrators. As young as you are, you can sit down and administrate. You didn't read this at me. Could that gift take you? There are some of you who can write proposals. There are many of you who can do a lot of things. I'm speaking to you tonight. Wake up. Call your name and say, wake up. One to go. See, prophesy it from the spirit. One more time. One to go. Yes, the Bible says, awake thou that sleepest. That means you have been sleeping. Awake thou that sleepest. And Christ will give you life. Somebody called me and said, Josh, at, at this level of your life, what are you doing? I said, preparing for an extraordinary life. This is what I'm doing right now. This is what I do every day. When people get up and run, everybody is going for work, everybody is doing, I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. Oh, and when the master is done with me, he will present me as a masterpiece, a symbol of his wisdom and artistry. I speak to you. 
you will hear this message many years after now when you stand and watch the world clap for you and tears stream down your face you will tell them this award is given to me in london but i was trained in zaria and i did not despise the chastening of the lord many of you this teaching is hard on you it's a wake-up call but despise not the days of chastening i bring you a word let the devil not lie to you you are great you are on your way to happen i don't care how many times you have failed in life when you become successful when a woman has a miscarriage 50 times and she gives birth the 51st time nobody will ask how many times you had miscarriage we don't care are you hearing what i'm saying i am somebody i am somebody I am somebody. I had that song years ago. We went to sing in a church. And while they were singing it, they were laughing. That song entered my spirit till today. Tell yourself I am somebody. It's time to stop this false humility and start believing in what God. This is what koinonia is all about. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit partnership with him to shake the world i would never if if i tell myself i am not great i'm lying it's not humility it's foolishness say i am great say it one more time say it one more time say it one more time say the world will testify that i am great say it, the world will testify that i'm great say i will walk at it I may cry, but I will walk at it. It will cost me, but I will walk at it. Understanding. You are paying the price. Some of you will be mighty women of God. As you are looking at me, you, you, God has already shown you. It does, you, are, you are wondering, how shall these things be like Mary? He said, thou art favored, thou... How did he even put it? That salutation. Hail Mary. Mother of grace, he said, Thou art favored among other women. She said, What meaneth these salutations? How shall these things be? Don't you don't need to ask how it shall be? Let me tell you. Whether you are a mother here, whether you are a father, whether you are a sister, a brother, young or old, at any level, if you can allow God to take a hold, I have found my servant David, and with my holy oil I have anointed him. What has God given you? I'm speaking to you. What has God given you? Oh, God has given you leadership. Take it to the extreme. Let that gift make room for you. God has given you grace for ministry. Take it to the extreme. God has given you business acumen. Stand up and establish those conglomerates. Don't let no devil talk nonsense to you. Let the employment of Nigeria not threaten you. Tell yourself, I will arise. I will create jobs. Thousands of jobs. Can be a lady and God is telling you you are entering into the finance world don't sit down and let people call you a weaker vessel it's time to begin to silence those demonic voices you've never held 10,000 of your money so what your gift will bring for you something your entire family did not hold hallelujah we are going to pray everybody close your eyes just in one minute before we pray close your eyes where you are and just begin to meditate in one minute i'd like you to begin to see yourself the champion that god has made you i'd like you to begin to see yourself solving the problems of mankind you are an ambassador see yourself shaking away the limitation of your culture see yourself shaking away that limitation who told you you cannot get there i'm speaking to your spirit just close your eyes and meditate i have found my servant david i have a gift i have an ability given by god i have an ability men may not understand it now men may not understand it now is still in the process of refining is still in the process of refining 
but when god is done with you my sister i tell you although you cannot speak good english now i am telling you when that gift is done you will stand near scholars and it will be an honor for them to stand with you yes i know you came from the village yes i know you came from the village you've not afforded a good meal but who told you that gift cannot take you i'm speaking to you yes you have not gotten admission you wrote jam 20 times but who told you that gift cannot rise up i'm speaking to you yes your wire didn't work well yes you started that business and failed but who told you that anointing is not in you oh yes it is yes it is yes it is i don't care what has happened yes it is who told you that that anointing the first day you prayed for a sick person the person was not healed in fact he died but god told you you have been called to take his healing power to the nations do you believe it there are many of you that are a tv hosts god is taking you to do mighty things some of you are beauticians some of you are mighty men and women joshua the high priest stood before god and satan was there to accuse him and he says satan is this not a reed that i've taken out of fire the lord rebuke you at any level you can start hear me tonight i'm speaking to you at any level you can start joseph in one night he slept as an ordinary slave he woke up the next day and his gift made room for him somebody's gift will make room for him rise up on your feet now in the next five to ten minutes please if you want to scatter yourself around i want you to pray let me tell you if i if i say prayer and i see some of you looking at me i'll come and hold your hands and pray with you here please if you are sleeping wake up we are finished wake up it's time to pray inside and outside there's no space for you inside go outside to pray i want us to pray the bible says this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy many of some of you don't know these giftings you are going to pray and say lord what did you put in me what did you put in me i'm tired of inferiority and complex i'm tired of being thought out of as a second class person what did you put in me for your glory that's prayer point number one lift your voice right now and begin to pray Come on now, Koinonia, you won't pray like this. You won't pray like this. Shekata bakata prakata bela de bokoso pata. Shekata prakata prakata bokoso pakata. Ma prakata pakata. Lord, what is that treasure? What do I have in my house? Shekete kete bokoto pada pa. Young and old, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Sekete prekete ke pekete ke topo kosopata. Rekete proske pai maka prakata le koto proske bariata a proko to pekete pekete bananaba. Make sure you are praying. Lord, what is that gift? What is the rod of God in my hand? I'm tired of trying to look like everybody. I'm tired of trying to talk like everybody. Koinonia, pray. Shekete teko sopeka. Shembreke teke posha. Rekete proskope ekotoriata. Mambro to zekete. Rekete posa. Lord, show me my uniqueness. Show me. He said, call on to me. And I will answer. I will show you. I will show you. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Show me, O oh God. Show me, O oh God. Come on, Koinonia, pray. Show me, O oh God. Show me, O oh God. My father did not see it. My mother did not see it. Show me, oh God. There is a generation waiting for a revelation 
of the glory of God that is in me. Kapate prekete koto prekete. Pray, pray. You came here tonight to pray. What do you have in your house? What do you have? Where is that ability that can make you stand anywhere? That will also give you a seat among the great. Koinonia, pray. I don't like the way some of you are praying. Come on, pray. Contend in the spirit. Every power of darkness that wants you not to discover that gift in you, the Lord rebuke it. Pray. It will come out. It will come out. It will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Forget about where you are now. Forget about where you are today. Forget about what you don't have. Forget about what has happened. Pray. Pray. Invest into your tomorrow. Invest into your tomorrow. What is it, oh God? I call unto you. He said, call unto me. I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. He will show you in a dream. He will show you in a vision. He will show you through prophetic confirmation. He will show you through your passion. He will show you through your desires. Show me, oh God, show me, oh God, the gift that will end poverty in my lineage. Show me that gift that will end poverty. Show me that gift that will bring my family to greatness. Show me that gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You're going to speak and say, Lord, I received a baptism of diligence to refine and develop my gifts. Are you hearing me? Some of us hear me. Some of us, you need to reduce your time of pointless visitations going to go and meet friends and gossiping and discussing about things that have no bearing to your future are you hearing me you're going to see whether it is in the rain in the sun you're going to tell yourself i may cry i may weep i may not look fine now as i'm doing it but i'm ready hear me some of you by this prayer you will need to cut away from godless and unserious friends well, hold on I'm speaking to some of you because for some of you it is your friends and your company that are keeping you from being great your, this friend thing love is a command association is not there's nobody that says you must have many friends to show you are making progress in life they may gossip about you they may misunderstand you don't worry when you become great it will settle the matter are you hearing me you are going to pray now and say, Lord, diligence. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before kings. Lift your voice and pray. Diligence to fast. Diligence to pray. Diligence to study. Day and night. Diligence to read books. Diligence to listen to tapes. Diligence to go for workshops. 
Keto Peketosa Rekoto Leke Prosketia. I receive a baptism, a fresh baptism, a fresh baptism, a fresh baptism. Are you praying, Koinonia? Are you praying? Leke Teke Teke Levosh, Leke Proseke Televosha, Ma Prosko Seke Tebosha, Reke Telekosia. Pray. Say, I break free from ungodly movies, ungodly associations, ungodly places for the sake of my destiny. I pay the price. I pay the price. I saw the seed. I may weep, but I saw the seed. I can't be a failure in life. Yes, you are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to greatness. You are praying your way to prosperity. You are praying your way to generational blessings. You are praying your way to extraordinary impact. My sister, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Haleka prosekete. Forget about your failures and pray. Forget about your failures and pray. Say, Lord, I will start again. I used to set goals before, but now I'm backsliding. I used to watch videos every day. I used to listen to DVDs, but now I'm backslidden. But tonight, tonight, a baptism, fresh grace. I won't give up. I won't give up. Come on now. Arise. Let your dreams arise. Refuse to give up. God is faithful. Refuse to give up. Go back again. Do it again. Shake it You are laboring in the spirit. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Last prayer point for this night. Listen. Hear me. The last prayer point. You are going to pray. We just have about two more minutes left. You are going to pray. And send dangerous prophecies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are going to prophesy. And tell yourself that top is for me. No devil will stop me. That top is a position God has prophesied over my life from his word lift your voice and pray I'm meant for the top meant for the top meant for the top in business the top in leadership the top in music the top prophesy to yourself an extraordinary academian an extraordinary worshiper, extraordinary musician, extraordinary media giant, extraordinary business mogul, extraordinary apostle, extraordinary prophet, extraordinary evangelist. Pray! Nigeria, open up! Open up! My gift is bringing me. Abuja, open up. Lagos, open up. Port Harcourt, open up. Kano, open up. Joss, open up. London, open up. Israel, open up. China, open up. My gift is making room. Prophesy, my gift is making room. 
labor market open up nigerian labor market open up your gift your gift gospel music industry open up generals are coming generals are coming doors of ministry open up miracle workers are coming fiery apostles are coming fiery prophets are coming Nigeria open up ladies of excellence are coming women of virtues are coming the borders are coming Nigeria open up our ladies are coming they are coming with the spirit of Elijah they are coming entrepreneurs business giants business giants billionaire philanthropists healing ministers miracle workers reformers pray pray i'm coming i'm on my way nothing will stop me pain will not stop me persecution will not stop me criticism will not stop me discouragement will not stop me failure will not stop me i'm on my way there is a prophecy there is a prophecy i wore a good warfare one more minute prophesy my gift is making room it's making room hallelujah hallelujah koinonia hear me your gift is making room for you are you hearing what i'm saying lift your hands i want to prophesy to your life i want you to receive it with all your heart i prophesy that these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever these hands that are lifted will remain lifted forever I declare that for those of you who do not know what that gift and that uniqueness is this night this night this night may the angel of the Lord visit you in dreams in visions receive dreams receive visions receive dreams receive visions let your eyes be open hallelujah i pray for those of you who are suffering from any kind of discouragement or laziness mental laziness spiritual laziness physical laziness and you don't have grace to develop your gifts this night i pray that a fresh fire a fresh baptism will fire you for diligence receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus fresh fire for diligence grace to read books grace to stay awake in the night grace to study principles Hear me, those of you who have been talked down to, those of you who they've told you, you have failed in one way or the other, or all kinds of things have made you feel inferior, you are afraid to try, I pray for you now this night. In the name that is above all names, receive grace to take steps. Take action. Over that business, take action. Over that job, submit the CV. Apply again. Apply again. Write the jam again. Apply again. Hallelujah. I pray for some of you who 
you are the only ones that are visionary in your family and it's bringing a lot of persecution people don't know what you are they don't even know that it's for their own good every time they castigate you i pray right now in the name that is above all names that devil that wants to orchestrate an event to discourage you right now this night lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted all ye ancient doors i command that devil to be silenced in the name of jesus hallelujah for some of you your barriers are you don't know the books to read you don't know the dvds to buy you don't know who to meet i pray that spirit of god that gives direction the bible says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it i prophesy this night receive direction for your destiny may the lord take you to the right books the right people the right anointings the right counsel the right dvds the right tapes the right mp3s in the name of jesus anyone here under any yoke of death that says you will not live to be at the top lift your hand so you see the way death is killing people like chickens i want to pray for you you have no covenant with death i'm telling you now hallelujah there are families the moment you rise up death just comes to take people i pray right now the bible says in six things shall he deliver you yea in seven things he said in the time of famine you will laugh i want to rebuke the hand of death that death that kills people look at the way lecturers are dying look at the way people are just dying like chickens a man will be standing a car will come and carry him in the name that is above all names i declare the blood of jesus upon you exempts you for death it exempts you from death the blood is upon you you shall not die you shall not die you shall not die I speak to the earth I forbid it from receiving your body all earth share ye the word of the Lord by this apostolic grace I command the earth to reject your body Will not be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus the spirit that destroys men in accidents you are exempted from it in the name of Jesus you will not be a victim of Boko Haram or any act of terrorism you will not be a victim of any activity of thieves and armed robbers ladies you will not be a victim of rape or gang violence lift your hands and give God thanks I tell you your spirit is fired up this night what do you have in your house hallelujah now very quickly if you're here and you've never given your heart to the Lord hallelujah we're still praying you're here and you've never made a decision for Jesus perhaps this is your first time of coming this night and you've been hearing my voice the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart hallelujah we're a family and we do not condemn anyone or some of you have given your heart to the Lord but honestly you know that you found yourself derailing from the things of God but tonight you have heard the word of God that you have a glorious destiny. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. Reynard Bonke said the door is narrow but it's always open. Always open. Are you hearing me? Right now I'm going to make an altar call. Don't wait for somebody else to come. When I make that altar call as the spirit of God speaks to you, please come out here very quickly so that we'll pray for you. Lead you to Jesus Christ and you'll begin a journey. If you are not born again, it doesn't matter how many times you have prayed is all a waste jesus is the door that will lead you into this experience right now wherever you are i want you to leave your seat and come out here right now you're giving your heart to jesus for the first time or you're rededicating your life please don't sit back don't sit back
don't sit back don't sit back god bless you god bless you my sister she's not the only one god is still speaking to people leave your seat and come thank you my brother koinonia celebrate them celebrate them jesus is calling you today into a real experience enough of playing church thank you thank you keep coming keep coming this is where it all starts keep coming the bible says if all our hope is just in this life we are of all men god most miserable god bless you keep coming if there are still more people who are waiting for you i believe that the lord is talking to somebody i believe that the lord is talking to somebody inside and outside make sure you don't sit back no matter how far you are keep coming keep coming don't let your friends stop you keep coming hallelujah hallelujah the lord jesus brought you here this night to start afresh again some of you you are giving your heart to the lord truly and seriously for the first time others you have you have given your heart to the lord but you are ready to make a commitment and a rededication there's nothing to be ashamed of i want you to lift your right hand as you pray this prayer the lord jesus christ is in this place say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i thank you for dying for my sins today i have heard your word i give up everything and i declare that you are my savior and you are my lord sin is no longer part of my life i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god holy spirit come and live in me grant me the grace to live the victorious christian life from today i'm a child of god transformed changed i'm not going back to yesterday in the name of jesus christ amen bless you let me pray for you father thank you you brought these ones by yourself they are making true commitments for you and lord i thank you because they were not ashamed let this be the beginning of their best days in the name of jesus christ let this decision not be emotional lord i thank you because these are genuine decisions that will last holy spirit we trust your power to keep and transform and we thank you because truly this will be the beginning of great moments in the name of jesus i salute you for making these great decisions please follow the ushers they will have your details this way you'll meet with pastor jakes tomorrow some of you don't come for the meetings please um ushers or protocol let them know the date for the follow-up god bless you appreciate them very quickly soon we'll be out of here if you're worshiping with us for the first time i know that there are some families that have come here uh we discussed we we'll minister to you but you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time of coming for koinonia this glorious prophetic meeting i'd like you to leave your seat and run out here quickly we want to bless you and pray for you you are welcome quickly 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 bless you bless you bless you bless everyone the lord brought you here by his spirit thank you mommies thank you thank you for coming no matter how far you are come we have a blessing and a prophecy for you keep coming don't stop if you brought anybody and the person is not coming out push the person push the person till he moves out say come out in jesus name hallelujah thank you so much for coming this is koinonia hallelujah praise the lord i believe that the lord has done something remarkable in your life today you will go back and see dramatic changes hallelujah we want to pray for you we have a prophecy and a blessing and i want you to believe it hallelujah as we pray for you the things we're speaking over your life for will happen hallelujah saints of god stretch your hands as Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.